but uh, we uh, we are almost at the end of our topic so, so we have uh, left the last topic laplace transform and uh, its application to uh, electrical systems although you have some experience of using laplace transform in your control engineering probably are not you using laplace transform in control engineering yes sir yes sir okay then you have the thing with you and in addition to that the mathematical background is also with you that you have learned in your earlier semester what we will do today what we are going to do today is uh, just to preliminary uh, article review of the mathematical aspects then we will be going to the application side the thing is that there exists a close similarity between uh, the laplace transform and fourier transform laplace transform is actually more versatile and general the reason is that not all functions can be uh, analyzed into fourier series but laplace transform has some uh, advantages that will be evident when we will be applying the thing to our system analysis so let me start with the actually the logic is very simple in developing our fourier concept what we have uh, <coughs> mentioned there that if we assume that your input can be expressed in the form of complex sinusoid then we can uh, apply the thing to our lti system and we observe that after having uh, some mathematical operation done there the output looks similar to your input and they are connected by a factor that is not function of time we call them the transfer function in general but particularly for fourier uh, analysis we call it frequency response of your system and it is nothing but the fourier transform of the impulse response of your system in the similar way uh, uh, the notion of laplace transform can be developed for the case of lti system so rather than mathematical aspects if we start with our uh, system concept that we have our system that is lti and the system impulse response is with us then the zero state response of your system can be determined by convolving the impulse response with the input then this is what that relationship and you know that this operation is commutative type you can change the position of your uh, uh, convolution operation that will not change the output now here in this case in the case of fourier series we assume that our input has this form now we are assuming that our input has this form it is also a well lasting exponential but we are uh, using a variable s there that s is generally defined as sigma plus j omega a complex uh, exponent if sigma are the real part of s become zero then it will coincide with your fourier transform the having this thing uh, with us then if we substitute it in the place of x then your output can be expressed in this way the what we have done earlier in the same way we can do this then this integral uh, is independent of uh, this integral actually is uh, will be done uh, with respect to tau the dummy variable for this region the time is taken out so this integral is represented by a quantity s we are calling it a transfer function but not calling it the frequency response the as result is that although s is there but s is a complex quantity for this region in many text you for laplace analysis is called complex frequency analysis and if we compare this equation with what you have learned in your uh, mathematics regarding the definition of a laplace transform is, isn't is, is, isn't that integral is very similar to that integral they actually this is what the laplace transform integral 
with this uh, uh, logic, if we proceed towards uh, uh, reviewing the mathematical aspects, then we can define the Laplace transform of a time varying function xt as this. And the inverse Laplace transform is this, because you see that whenever we are using a transformation technique, then a reverse transformation should always be there. Otherwise, uh, it is not complete. So, so transformation integral will be appearing as pairs. Now the thing is that if you see that if you want to use uh, the uh, synthesis equation, the inverse one, the second integral, it is a bit complicated to be evaluated. But we will not be going to that detail of mathematics. What we'll be uh, uh, using from now on is once we know the Laplace transform of some representative functions that we frequently encounter in our engineering, then the inverse Laplace transform can be taken by simple comparison technique rather than using this complicated integral. Usually mathematicians do it. So that we have to be uh, careful about and we have to memorize few uh, uh, the Laplace transform of few representative functions so that uh, we'll be feeling comfortable in handling with uh, Laplace transform in modeling our system. Another issue is that as uh, the all functions has some uh, parameters there and we have to integrate with a factor e to the power uh, when uh, we are uh, evaluating Laplace integral, uh, the analysis part, that means we are transforming a time varying singular into Laplace transform. That as uh, the exponent contains, uh, for example, S, T, and that is equal to S sigma plus J omega T, and e is equal to e to the power sigma T, into e to the power uh, minus is there. That's so this should be minus, minus, minus j omega t, something like this. Now this is what the crucial factor that will determine the uh, applicability of Laplace transform. So you, we see that if we have our system from that system, we can find that variable. Uh, and in that case, if you sigma is real and it cannot be negative, okay? If it is negative, then what will happen? happen, this exponent become positive, and eventually uh, that integral will not be integrable, okay? The, so in order to have the integrability of this uh, equation there, then this inequality should be satisfied. And that is usually done by the range of sigma that will determine uh, the evaluation of this integral. It is sometimes terms as regions of convergence of that integral. We'll not be talking much about it the region is that we will be handling our system where the region of converge will be ensured uh, in, 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 in uh, modeling our system. So this is the analysis, analogy between your uh, Laplace transform and Fourier transform. If you say to you sigma equal to zero, if sigma will coincide with your Fourier transform. And our S variable here is actually a complex variable in order to investigate the nature of S, what you need to do, we have to draw a figure that is called comp uh, S plane. And you have already learned it uh, in your complex variable once, and it probably in the case of your, comp uh, what you call, in your control engineering, because S plane is the uh, main uh, uh, complex plane where you can investigate uh, the stability and uh, the behavior of the response of a system. So in general, uh, we are calling it XS, a general function of S that will contain a numerator and a denominator. Then it is a complex variable. If it is a complex function, S is a complex variable. Then uh, uh, in terms of complex variable, you see that few things are there in complex variable terms that you know, the residue of a, a pole, the poles and zeros, something like this. The EP want to uh, investigate in the complex plane, we have to draw uh, or place the poles of the function in the complex plane and zeros of the function in the complex plane. And for this reason, this diagram is sometimes terms at pole zero diagram. You have heard it in your control system. 
your poles are nothing but the function value where uh, the poles are the s uh, values where your functions xs is uh, getting infinite the, so this is equal to what the roots of your denominator the, so your cross uh, this uh, crosses are the roots of your denominator and we have our numerator the zeros of a function is nothing but the roots of your numerator uh, numerator polynomial these are the circles are the roots of your numerical polynomial now the thing is that uh, you can easily identify that you have a plane that we call right half plane and we have a left half plane and we also analyze or investigated the thing during uh, analyzing chapter 2 from differential equation you can also uh, have some idea about this complex plane where we plot the roots of our characteristic equation in the complex plane then identify whether your system is stable and or unstable and in the same way actually uh, uh, those things can be investigated in Laplace transform by using this pole zero diagram and and again uh, the stability of your system as you know in your control system the gain parameters are there in your system when a feedback is there the de because uh, depending on the uh, tuning of your gain the locations of the pole and zeros can be tuned and eventually the stability of system can be controlled there so uh, this is there uh, probably a significant portion of your control engineering deals with the stability okay with this thing uh, uh, let us uh, discuss about some uh, representative uh, functions with their corresponding Laplace transform. So if you have a function e to the power a t u t, you know the Fourier transform of this function is 1 divided by a plus j omega. And the corresponding Laplace transform can be evaluated by evaluating the integral and it will be something like this. You see that the xs uh, will be uh, available with us when the real value of a is greater than a. If it is not, uh, for example, less than a, a or it is equal to a, then a pole is there and it cannot be evaluated at the pole. The, so the region of convergence, for example, uh, for this particular transform is uh, there. Okay, if your a is, uh, sigma is greater than or equal to a, then only when your uh, thing will be converging and in the other region it will not be converging. It is simple that if we have a function uh, that root has a real part and that real part should be uh, negative or depending on the representation if it is there e to the power minus st in that case the real part uh, should be there in such a way the response of your system will be uh, what we call not unbounded in time. So this is another example where you see that your signal says that we are having a signal that is not in the positive t, okay? It is from t equal to minus infinity to t. This is mathematics, so we will not be uh, discussing much about it. Let us concentrate on uh, some of the important properties of uh, unilateral tri unilateral means when because you see that in general we are uh, integrating from minus infinity to infinity in time but we know that for your causal system your output cannot for example be expected before giving the input for this reason in most of the cases our system will be cause causal and in this case your integration cannot can be done from zero to infinity and in that case it is called a unilateral type Laplace transform and in most of for cases, we'll be using unilateral type transfer functions in LTA system analysis. Okay, your Laplace transform actually has properties like your Fourier transform. Your Fourier transform has similar simple properties like linearity property. And uh, linearity property involves two uh, things. One is called homogeneity, another is your superposition. So this is what uh, the case. If we have two functions, xt and yt, whose Laplace transform of XS and YS, and if they are linearly combined in time domain, then their corresponding Laplace transform can also be similarly linearly combined. If, the, if this, that means this is what the linearity property. Another property is compression or a scaling property. If we have our signal that is a scale in amplitude that will not affect your Laplace transform, just simply increase the amplitude magnitude. 
but if we scale uh, in independent variable, in our case, it is in time, then what will happen? You see from, uh, we have seen in our Fourier transform that the uh, relationship uh, between scaling in time and in frequency are actually opposite. If a signal is compressed, then its spectrum will be expanded. If your signal is uh, expanded, your, uh, your uh, ex uh, spectrum will be compressed. But similar relationship exists in the case of Laplace transform. So this is what the scaling properties of Laplace transform. If we have a function xt whose Laplace transform is excess, then if it is scaled by a factor a in, term, in independent variable, corresponding Laplace transform can be determined in this way. The time shifting property, it is very similar. It is uh, similar to your Fourier transform. If we have a signal excess, uh, or, uh, XT whose Laplace transform is excess, then if we shift the signal by a amount of time tau, the corresponding signal is this. And one important thing mm -hmm. here to mention is that Laplace transform is applicable for continuous time system. For discrete time system or sample data system, we have another version of this transform which is called jet transform. And jet transform is the content of your digital signal processing course. The so another uh, thing is that if we have our, uh, okay, this is what our uh, 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 shifting property, this shifting per, per factor will be multiplied with the original transform of your excess that will give the Laplace transform of the shifted version. Then we have edge domain shift, like frequency shift. As you have seen that if we have in the Fourier transform, if we multiply a function with say gamma t, uh, j, uh, with a function j gamma t, with a function say x t, the corresponding Fourier transform is x j, your frequency will be shifted by the amount gamma. This is frequency shift. A similar shift operation exists in time domain. In, in, in your Laplace transform. If we multiply a function xt with this factor, e to the power h zero t, then uh, the corresponding Laplace transform will be shift. That means your s will be replaced by s minus h zero. Your h zero is a shift factor there in the time domain. Convolution property. This is one of the important properties that a convolution of uh, operation in the time domain will be a multiplication operation in the S domain. So these uh, properties are uh, almost uh, similar to what we have seen in the case of Fourier analysis. So it is not very dif uh, difficult to memorize. Then we have our differentiation properties. We know that if we have our uh, uh, Laplace transform of a function known, then if we have our two differentiations are there, one is called frequency, uh, domain difference with respect to frequency, another is with respect to time. But here one will be with respect to S, another with respect to time. So this is what that S domain uh, differentiation property, okay? That means if we have a function xt, whose Laplace transform is excess, then Laplace transform of a function multiplied by t with x t would be equal to differentiation of this function xs with respect to s. This property can be uh, uh, explored to find our Laplace transform in many different ways. We will be illustrating the thing just after a few uh, uh, minutes. This is what your Laplace transform of a differential in time. The Laplace transform is this, okay? This is coming from the initial values of your system. And a uh, differential property can be extended for uh, if you uh, take uh, the derivative n times, then this is for the equation, okay? All things are actually the initial values of the previous state. That means you have to know the value of uh, uh, n minus one derivative of your function or t equal to zero minus, you know the meaning of zero minus and zero plus. Zero minus will be uh, the state immediately before, because differential equation actually results from changing of the state. So whatever they are in your system before changing the state is represented by time t equal to zero minus. 
whatever there in your system will be existing immediate after changing the state is determined by t equal to zero plus. And in most of our cases where derivative exists in your independent, uh, in your output, that means that your system contains energy storage element. Uh, so there must be a continuity uh, between the output at time t equal to zero minus and t equal to zero plus. Uh, that is, uh, can be said uh, in a different way like that your inductor current or capacitor voltage cannot change instantaneously. The so integration property is the reverse property of your differential property. We have to remember this. We will apply this thing uh, in our analysis. Then uh, it will be very easy to you, uh, be very easy to remember. It is not very difficult. Okay, let us uh, apply the thing to a very simple example. We have investigated this example in many of our earlier cases uh, as an ideal first order system, and it is actually a low pass filter. Your R and C values are there. Now, in how, how our objective is actually hard. Whenever we are using our uh, transformation technique, our objective is to find the output of that system. Now, whenever we are uh, using time domain, that input-output relationship first we need to develop. Then we have to find the impulse response. Then we convolve our impulse response with our input. Then we get our zero state output. Or we have to solve the input-output relationship to find the total response of your system by using the solution of differential equation that we learned in chapter two. But in Laplace transformation, we have our three different ways to proceed with. Number one is this, that if the impulse response of your system is known to you, if the impulse response of your system is known to you, then what you can you do? You can calculate your ACS by transforming it into Laplace transform then your input will be given. You can transform your in input into Laplace transform. Then you multiply your Laplace transform of your impulse function, that is what your transfer function, and multiply it with your input transform. This multiplication will give you the output transform. Then your output transform will be available to you. Then you take the Laplace inverse of your output, output transform that will give you the output in time domain yt. This is what the process. So this is what your first uh, method, okay? This is your first method. In this method, ht is the main thing, okay? If your ht is not available, then we cannot proceed with this uh, technique. In this particular example, your xt was uh, given as t e to the power t a to the power 2 t u t. Okay, your input was t a to the power 2 t u t. Okay, can you tell me what will be the Fourier transform of this thing, uh, Laplace transform of this quantity? Our function is x t equal to t e to the power 2 t u t. Can anyone find it? So we can find the Laplace transform of e to the power 2t, then use the differentiation property. Okay, very good. That means we can, first step is we can take that, that means we have to take the Laplace transform e to the power 2t, and that will be equal to s minus 2. Then what you need to do, you have to differentiate it with respect to s, then multiply it with minus 1, isn't it? Yes, sir. That yes, will sir. give you the Laplace transform xt. Okay, this is one way to do that. Can you find a, a, a other simpler way, more uh, more simple than the more than this? So we can find the Laplace transform of t and then use the 
e to the power is t multiplication yes okay. that is good okay that is what i want to know okay this is very simple okay first you see you take the laplace transform of t we know that laplace transform of t is equal to s square isn't it but because of this factor what is happening a frequency shift will be or s shift will be happening here your s0 equal to 2 isn't it the so you think will be equal to what the laplace transform of this thing will be lt of this uh, function will be simply 1 divided by s minus 2 square isn't it the so you can easily verify it okay in either way you can go you can use your uh, uh, time uh, or differentiation in s property or you can use your uh, shift in s property okay in both ways you can go the so your a is okay in this uh, by using the value of r and c here in this rc equal to what it is 200 microfarad it is 1 kilo ohm then rc equal to it is simply 0 0.2 second okay then 1 by rc equal to 5 so this is what the Fourier uh, laplace transform of is this is the laplace transform of x then you multiply them together that will give you the laplace transform of what output can you find the inverse of y yes sir with partial fraction with partial fraction exactly in this case you see that in doing partial fraction few uh, thing you have to understand you see that at the denominator of this function you have a repeated root at s equal to 2 for this reason this function should be expressed in this way a divided by s plus 5 plus b divided s minus 2 plus c by s minus s s minus 2 square isn't it then you apply your uh, very elementary mathematics there to find the value of a b and c now what will be the inverse then y t equal to you take the inverse of your first term it will be a e to the power minus 5 t ut isn't it yes. your second term will be b e to the power 2 t ut your third term will be t to the t c to the e to c to the power um, c into e to the power t into e to the power 2t ut isn't it yes, yes sir, sir. The, so in the, the okay do we need to integrate to take inverse we do not need it okay because we know the properties and uh, the inverse transformation pairs of some representative function that is enough to find our inverse very easily, okay? In most of our cases, our functions will be appearing as this. But some classes of functions are there where some non-integer power of uh, irrational functions, we sometimes say, uh, power of S will be there. In such cases, uh, your Laplace transform is to be taken in a different way. Uh, if I could afford time, uh, probably I will discuss about it. Okay, you can take, help of your uh, reference probably fifth reference okay linear system analysis by dk chang uh, in that book you will find it in chapter seven or eight something like this where some irrational functions are there uh, such functions are used in communication engineering like error function have you heard about error function or q function because you, you have you heard uh, in, in communication engineering when you are using uh, calculating the performance of your communication system like uh, beat error rate or something like this probably it is the content uh, these are the content of digital communication uh, probably this course is there in third year no no sir. digital uh, sir i think digital communication is in sir fourth year sir four one in the four one okay the in digital communication then you will find this function error function and some other uh, functions. Some functions you have already learned about, uh, for example, gamma functions, beta functions. Do you know? In your mathematics, gamma beta function? No? So, so these things are uh, will be there, okay? Then uh, we will discuss the thing later if possible. So, so in this way, actually, you can proceed with calculating your uh, system response. That this is your method one. Now, in method okay we are we are going successively there okay these are uh, this is what for your uh, practice okay if we have our functions uh, of this form uh, how can we find the laplace transform okay although your functions are looking very complicated but if you know the properties you can uh, find the left 
plus transform of this function very easily. Okay, look, for this, uh, for, for example, consider your uh, first problem. I, what will be the Laplace transform? Okay, if you want to apply the properties, you have to identify first the original function, okay? Then uh, you apply your properties. Look, you can go uh, in two different ways. For example, in this case, we can separate this thing into these two ways, one minus t, one function the, there, multiply, then separate this function t minus two into u t minus two. Can we do that? Is it okay? Yes, sir. Fine. The if you want to find the Laplace transform, from where, what is the actually original function xs? The original function x is actually t, isn't it? Yes. Sir. And it is shifted by two time unit, isn't it? So the Laplace transform of this quantity uh, function will be equal to what? If you want to find this Laplace transform, a shift factor will be there e to the power minus 2s. And it is s square, isn't it? This is what the Laplace transform of this function. Is it okay? If it were, for example, T U T, what is the Laplace transform? One okay. by S square. <laughs> if it is T minus two into U T minus two, that means you are shifting by two times your Laplace transform would be equal to E to the power minus two S divided by S square, isn't it? Yes, sir. Okay, yes, sir. now a multiplier is there, E to the power minus T. You can consider here your edge zero equal to minus one. So your resultant shift will be equal to what? The result, uh, your total Laplace transform, you just simply replace S by S plus 1. But this will be equal to e to the power minus 2 S plus 1 divided by S plus 1 square. Is it okay? Yes, sir. Uh, how many minutes it needs to do? Probably more, less than one minute, okay? That's so you have to practice. Okay, consider the, your next, uh, prob, uh, next thing. Can you do that in the same way? Yes, sir. Here you can consider that your t square ut can be your original function. And the Laplace transform would be equal to factorial 2 divided by s to the power 2 plus 1 means s cube. Then because of this uh, factor, a time shift, uh, s shift will be there equal to s0 equal to plus, minus 2. Then the thing will be equal to factorial 2 divided by s plus 2 cube, isn't it? Yes. Okay, what will be the Laplace transform of this quantity? You see that the letter terms are what? Letter terms are nothing but shifted version of your first term. Are not they? The, so the Laplace transform of the first term will be equal to 1 by s square. Laplace transform of the second term will be equal to 1 divided by s square e to the power minus s. Third term will be 1 by s square e to the power minus 2s. Fourth term will be 1 by s square e to the power minus 3s. Are not there? Then you add them together. That is what the Laplace transform of this function. And in the case of D, several properties you need to apply consecutively. One is your uh, two properties are there. One is your shifting property, another is convolution property, isn't it? Okay, as a convolution sign is there, the uh, x s will be equal to the Laplace transform of the first term e to the power minus t u t, and Laplace transform of the second term e to the power cos t minus two u t minus two. What is the Laplace transform of cos t? It is equal to s divided by s square plus one, isn't it? Yes, sir. The because of this shift, what will happen? A shift term will be there e to the power minus 2s. So this is for cos. And for this factor, it is simply 1 divided by s plus 1. So 1 divided by s plus 1 is this factor. And this is what for cosine t minus 2 u t minus 2. Is it okay? And as they are uh, convolved, in, convolved together the, in the S domain, they will be multiplied. Okay. 
Okay, uh, can you remember some other properties or theorems regarding your uh, Laplace transform that is very useful? And have you used them in 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 your uh, communic uh, control engineering? Say, for example, final value theorem, initial value theorem. Have you heard about those theorem? Yes, sir. We have used final value theorem for steady state error calculation. Yes, yes, that's good. You have used the final value theorem for steady state error calculation. Okay, very important thing. Okay, in error calculation, you see that if you model your system and you, you can examine the step response of your system, okay? In general, what will happen? The step response of your normalized system will be one. But in many of your cases, you will see that that is less than one, okay? Or some overshoot can, undershoot can be there. But when you are using a steady state error, okay, what do you need to do? Unless you uh, uh, solve your uh, input-output relationship in time domain, it cannot be uh, in general calculated. But sometimes going to time domain will be very time consuming. So what you can do from the S domain, you can easily find the final value, the steady state value. And if uh, by comparing the uh, original, uh, what you comparing with the value that you are expecting and the uh, value you obtained, you can easily calculate the error. It depends on many other factors like damping constants, like other uh, issues are there and undermined natural frequencies are also there. Now, this is what the mathematical aspects of uh, doing this thing. Okay, by using this uh, in a, uh, limiting fun operation, you can find the initial values, and from this you can find the uh, find the final values. A zero plus sign is there. This is coming from the concept of uh, your linear system analysis. You see. When we formulate a system that, okay, we have our zero plus and zero minus. Zero minus is what? If we change a state at t equal to say zero minus, your system is in another state. And at t equal to zero plus, your system is in a new state. So whenever we write differential equation, that differential equation we write for time t equal to zero state. For example, say if you have a switch, you may have a circuit something like this, okay? You may have a source there, plus minus, and a switch is there, say R, say C. Then you, you are uh, having another switch, uh, source there, okay? And another switch is also there, something like this. Okay, if this, this was connected here, say for a long time, then you will have some scenario. Then at time t equal to zero, say, this switch is transferred to say, from position A to position B. Then what will happen? After this transfer, a new state is beginning. So if that new state is beginning, this is hot. Your time t equal to zero plus, we are shifting the switch. Then from time t equal to zero minus a state, when your switch was at position A, we will be bringing some initial values in our system. Okay, the, but for, for the case of continuity, the value of these two things must be same. So, your differential equation formulation actually starts from time t equal to zero plus ahead. For this reason, whatever values we are calculating by using differential equation, because these uh, S uh, functions are obtained from differential equations, so that will contain uh, the initial values that is related to time t equal to zero plus, the new state. For this reason, this symbol uh, zero plus is used here rather than zero minus because zero minus is another state already uh, uh, they are modeled but we are uh, it is important because we need to know is there anything there in this system could be borrowed uh, in the new state and final value uh, uh, it is also for the new state and you know final value is sometimes called std state value so if we know this function, this function can be a generalized function. In general, in our case, we refer it for the output. If we have okay, output or response of our system. So uh, what is the okay? What is the utility of this thing? One already you have mentioned that we can calculate the steady state error or uh, the final values of your system uh, without solving the system completely. Because transformation technique actually occupy transformation techniques occupy an intermediate stage in system modeling. Initially, your system is in the time domain. 
then you transfer it into the frequency domain or S domain by using uh, the technique that we have learned. We have different techniques. Then after having your system transferred into the S domain or frequency domain, then we analyze, modify, uh, or uh, find the output in the domain. Then we again go to the inverse transformation to uh, uh, know your uh, behavior in the time domain. But in taking your inverse transformation will take time in many of our purposes. But at the end of your transformation, you found that you see you are finding that your system is not responding properly. Then again, you have to come back at the beginning and model your system. So, but if we can, if we can find these two parameters at the beginning, then you can easily identify whether your system is performing well or model properly or not. Then you can go back from this intermediate state at the beginning to tune your system. So this is how our transformation system is helping us to model our system. Okay, one example is there, how can we be applied? Okay, say FT is a function, a generalized function. Okay, you can take help of your Alexander Sadiku's book, uh, chapter, 18 or 17 probably, where you will find this thing there with many, many examples of electrical circuit and operational amplifiers. You can, uh, we will uh, be uh, introducing few of them, but uh, very nicely presented there, okay? Now the thing is that if we have a function, that function say, we, uh, because we are using a known functions to verify this thing. Actually, if we have this function, in time domain, this is what is Laplace transform. In time domain, what is the initial value? The initial value means that value at t equal to zero, is it not equal to one? The initial value of this function is one, okay? That is evident from the time domain. But if this function is frequency domain, say you are starting from this point, then you apply uh, this uh, technique there. You multiply this function with s, then set your limit s tends to infinity, but setting your limit there, you know from your high school level that how to set it. Okay, in this case, you can cannot directly put s equal to infinity there. What you need to do, you divide your numerator and denominator by s square. Then you apply your s equal to infinity. This will give you the value equal to one. Is it okay? Yes, sir. If you want to know the final value, final value would be equal to what for this function? Kotakao, what will be the final value? Zero. Zero. Why zero? Why zero? Actually, I don't know. Only one or two of the students are resp uh, responding. Others, others are not. So S is multiplied in the numerator and S equal to zero for the final value. S equal to zero for the final value. And can you identify it from time domain that your final value would be equal to zero? Yes, sir. Because you see that if we plot this function, if we plot this function, how it will look like? Is it not an exponential decaying, something like this? Yes, sir. So uh, you can easily verify it. Another example is there. Try to, okay, you have this slide with you uh, in your Google Drive. Uh, try to verify it. Now another issue uh, of interest is uh, periodic functions. Okay, have you heard about it uh, or learned about it that uh, Fourier transform or yeah, Laplace transform can be applicable to uh, periodic functions in your mathematics course? Can you remember or you have not learned it? No, sir. Okay. Then you see uh, if we analyze uh, our uh, uh, a periodic functions you can easily uh, uh, see that the periodic functions are nothing but your, a portion of your uh, signal is translated uh, in time, isn't it? For example, if you compare your first cycle with second one, are not the exact replica? Yes, sir. But difference is what? They are not occurring in the same time interval, isn't it? So if you want to split, for example, this signal 
into its uh, in terms of its period your first period can be this second period can be there third period can be there if we add these three figures together i don't we will be getting the figure one isn't it yes sir so then what is the relationship actually among these three uh, uh, periods you see that if we consider this is f1 t can you express f2 t with the help of f1 t yes sir what is it your f2 t equal to f1 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 t minus t capital t isn't it similarly you can express your f3 t in terms of f uh, f2 t your f3 t equal to f2 t minus tau isn't it yes sir okay and again uh, you can express it as in terms of f1 it is simply f1 into t minus 2t isn't it yes sir okay if this is the case then if we say that the fourier transform of f1 is uh, a fourier laplace transform of f1 t is f1s then what is the laplace transform of f2t it will be equal to f1s with the shift factor minus ts isn't it yes sir and for f3 for f3 it will be equal to f1s e to the power minus 2 uh, it okay the so if we go in this way this is what your first cycle your second cycle is simply shifted by t amount of time to the right your third cycle is shifted by twice the amount of time your fourth cycle is shifted by to the in this way your n cycle will be shifted n minus 1 ts isn't it then you can take your fs common this series can be put into this form so this is what the fourier tra laplace transform of a periodic function that can be expressed or explained as the laplace transform of a periodic function is equal to laplace transform of its first cycle divided by 1 minus e to the power minus ts where your t is the time period of the periodic signal okay we will need it uh, in dealing with uh, signals that has periodic in nature in the s domain and these are actually mathematics so uh, my suggestion would be you please try to revisit this uh, table and uh, learn something about or memorize some representative uh, functions and their laplace transform that will help us in uh, finding the laplace inverse in particular okay i have taken this thing from your text uh, alexander sadiku's book okay for example if we have a signal st Uh, of the upper uh, uh, this uh, first figure okay without for example uh, uh, writing anything there you can easily find the laplace transform you see that it can be this pulse can be uh, this signal can be split into two pulses okay one is this another is this can we express this thing uh, in terms of unit step is it not 20 into ut minus ut minus 4 is it and uh, and the second one is 10 u t minus 4 minus u t minus 8 isn't it yes sir then you can easily take the four laplace transform in the same way in this case it is a periodic signal with a period equal to what 2 period equal to two time unit exactly if your period equal to two then what you need to do you have to take the fourier transform of your first cycle so this is what your first cycle so if you want to take the fourier transform of this first cycle lap plus transform of this first cycle can you do it for example your first cycle is uh, something like this 0 1 2 and this amplitude is 2 isn't it this is your say f1t 
can you take the laplace transform of this function okay can this function be generated in this way if we have a function something like this 2t ut this is a ramp function isn't it not a unit ramp but a ramp with slope equal to 2 is it okay yes then if we multiply this function with a pulse with duration equal to 1 the amplitude equal to 1 are not we getting this thing yes sir okay so then your f1 t can be expressed as what f1 t would be equal to 2 t u t minus 1 oh no would be equal to 2 t u t minus u t minus 1 is it and that is equal to 2 t u t minus 2 t u t minus 1 okay this can easily be understood and we can find the Laplace transform, but this needs to be uh, further shaped. The thing is that T U T minus T is actually undefined. For this reason, what you need to do, you have to express this signal in this way. Your T can be replaced by T minus one plus one and put it into U T minus one in this way. Then this is equal to what? Two T U T minus two t minus 1 u t minus 1 and rest is minus 2 u t minus 1 isn't it yes sir then this lap, uh, for your uh, laplace transform of this is equal to a 2 divided by s square and for this 2 divided by s square e to the power minus s for this 2 divided by s e to the power or minus s okay so this is what you uh, laplace transform of the first cycle then you divide this uh, laplace transform by 1 minus e to the power minus 2s this will give you the laplace transform of your periodic function that you have seen okay the method 2 sir what will be the laplace transform of u minus t Laplace transform of u minus t. What is the Laplace transform of ut? So 1 by s. 1 by s. Then it, what is it? Is it not a shifted version of ut? Sir, so neg um, negative t, not t. u negative t. We are not dealing with u negative t yet because we do not need it at that point. Okay. If you want to take, then you have to take the Laplace transformation by using your uh, integral. Okay. In this case, your integral will be from minus infinity to zero. Okay. And e to the power, then uh, this is, uh, we are using that at the beginning we said, we have said that we are using unilateral type transformation from time t equal to zero to infinity for what? For your uh, causal type of signal and systems. But you can easily do that by using mathematics, by integrating it, we are integrating the signal from zero to infinity. Uh, but in the case of u minus t, you can easily plot that your signal is from where to where? Minus infinity to zero. Okay, then minus infinity to zero. Then, then you integrate your signal uh, from minus infinity to infinity, your amplitude equal to one e to the power minus st dt, okay? Then if you integrate the signal, that will be the Laplace transform of your e to the power minus ut. Okay. So can we use all the properties we have seen so far in the in the negative region also? Of course, we can do that. But in this case, you have to find uh, put your signal in such a way so that those properties can be uh, shaped. You cannot use directly. Okay. Some changes will be there in time. Okay, sir. You can find that table, okay? In this table, something can, can be there, okay? Did, can you find this thing there? Because this table is for causal system only, okay? For this reason, this thing has not been discussed here. But you can do that, no problem. For example, even you can co convert the thing into positive side by changing the variable. For example, say if you have a signal U, if we have a signal u say 1 minus t, ok, 
Can you find the what is the time shift of your signal? Sir, in the negative direction one. In the is it in the negative direction one? That means you have to find, for example, at t equal to uh, zero. What will be your signal? E one, isn't it? Do yes. you have any value in E one? No. That means it is shifted in the negative direction in this way. So see, in that in the same thing, what you can do if you want to take the Fourier transform of this thing, what you need to do, you simply put one minus t is equal to tau a variable. Okay. Then uh, originally our limit was from minus infinity to zero. Then you change the value uh, corresponding limit to tau. Then you integrate it. That will give you uh, the corresponding Laplace transform by changing simple uh, changing the variable. Okay. For example, say uh, in Fourier transform, what have we done? If we have a signal, say e to the power minus magnitude of t. Do you see that what is the shape of the signal? Uh, decaying in both directions. Decaying in both directions. So if we want to take the uh, Fourier transform, you see that you have to integrate it from minus infinity to infinity, from minus infinity to infinity zero, and your function is not e to the power minus t. It must be e to the power t. You got the thing? Yes, sir. If it is negative, then what will happen? It will be a, a, a increasing function, something like this. So accordingly, okay, depending on the uh, signal. You have to have some idea, uh, then uh, you can apply your mathematics consistently there. But in this case, uh, we will not be considering uh, our negative uh, uh, time region, okay? Uh, but uh, uh, thank you for asking this question because this might happen in other cases, okay? So this is what you uh, uh, what he calls a second method, okay? We are uh, telling it method two. In the first method, our uh, seed thing was what? The impulse response. In your second method, what we want to do is we have to derive the input-output relationship in time domain. Once your input location and output locations are with us. Now you see that this equation we have derived several times. So this is the IO relationship, isn't it? And it is what? It is a difference, ordinary differential equation of first order, isn't it? Okay. Then if we replace the value of RC, then this will be your equation. Now the thing is that if you want to use your Laplace transform, we apply the Laplace transform LT and uh, to this ODE. Then you see that your first derivative, use the derivative property to replace your Laplace transform. And your second term has this Laplace transform and equal to the input side has this Laplace transform. Is it okay? Yes. Then, then this equation is actually a differential equation is actually transformed into a, a someone is uh, uh, keeping their mic on, noise is picking up. Please mute. That's so when we have our uh, equation there, you see one of the advantages of your Laplace transform is what? And a differential equation is transformed into an algebraic type equation, isn't it? That involves only multiplication and division or something like this, or addition, subtraction. Okay. Our objective is what? Our objective is what? We have to find yt. Once we transform the equation into Laplace transform, our yt is transformed into ys. So first thing is what? From this equation, we have to find ys. Then we have to take Laplace inverse of ys. Isn't it? Then we will get yt. So let us solve for ys. If we want to find ys, ys is equal to what? 5 xs divided by s plus 5 plus y0 minus divided by s plus 5, isn't it? Yes, sir. Okay, good. Many, many inter very interesting things are there. This is your total output yt. This is not in method one. We determined only zero state response. 
but in method two, you see we are obtaining a response that contains a term in input only. And we are having another term that contains state values only, the initial values. Are not they? Yes. Yes, sir. So then this part will be related to what type of response? Is it not JSR? Zero yes, state sir. response? And this part is JIR. So you see that Laplace transform will help you to determine these two responses simultaneously, okay? But the method one from impulse response actually we got only JSR. So our thing will will be rarely using method one. We will be using method two in general, okay? And another method we will be discussing. These two methods we will be using interchangeably. Another issue is that if you want to find the transfer function that is related to impulse response, you see that transfer function can be determined in this way because it is the ratio of our what? It is the ratio, your transfer function is the ratio of, your transfer oh, oh. function is, is the ratio of your output transform divided by input, input transform, isn't it? Yes, sir. Okay, the, if this is the case, then from this equation, can we determine it uniquely if y0 minus exists? This ratio cannot be determined in the from this equation so easily if we do not set y0 equal to 0. So this equation is applicable only when, only when, what? When, 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 y0 equal to 0. So transfer function is actually defined in this way. The transfer function is the ratio of your zero state output to the input. Okay. But by using your Laplace transform, we can easily find this. Okay. Now, unless we know the nature of excess, we cannot find uh, what you call the transfer function uh, or uh, uh, the zero state response. So when your excess will be given, XT will be given, take, uh, for example, the XT that you have seen earlier, it was equal to say T uh, e to the power minus 2 TUT. Then if this is your XT in the, uh, in the first example, then your XS would be equal to, you know that it will be equal to what? One divided by S plus two square, isn't it? Then you can put uh, the thing there to find your response. In that case, Y0, that means the initial uh, voltage across the capacitor will be specified and will be given. But not always that your second term, the ZIR, can exist in a system. If your system is relaxed and doesn't contain any initial values, then that term would be equal to zero. So in this way, we have our method two uh, by which we can find our system. We are almost at the end of the lecture. Then we will be discussing the method three in the next class, inshallah, where we will see that your system can be analysis to find the input output ratio. And we will discuss the thing uh, in the next class, inshallah. Okay. So this slide is with you. If you have your time, Please have a look, okay? Element wise transformation will be the content, beginning content of our next class, inshallah. So, in, in Tuesday of the next week, uh, we will be taking uh, section C and uh, section B and A together because of some maintenance work be, will be happening in uh, IUT campus. Uh, and IUT, those who are residing in IUT, they may, may not be able to access, access the uh, network. Sir, which time, sir? Two thirty or eleven forty? No, at 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 at, at the same uh, same same time. Okay, from eleven uh, fifteen. Okay, the eleven forty five. Okay, sir. Okay, then uh, you please request your uh, uh, other corresponding teacher to adjust uh, his routine accordingly. Actually, this should not be the my problem only. Probably uh, all teacher will be suffering from the same problem. Uh, in that time slot, okay? They will be maintaining it uh, from 1 p.m. to uh, 3 p.m. probably, what I have been informed. 
Okay, let me uh, uh, give your percentage. I will be starting from section A, roll number one. Yes, sir. Two. Yes, sir. Uh, three. Present, sir. Four. Present, sir. Five. Present, sir. Six. Yes, sir. Seven. Yes, sir. Eight. Present, sir. Ten. Yes, sir. Eleven. Present, sir. Fourteen. Yes, sir. Fifteen. Present, sir. Seventeen. Yes, sir. Eighteen. 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 Nineteen. Yes, sir. Twenty-one. Present, sir. Twenty-two. Twenty-two. Twenty-three. Yes, sir. Six. Yes, 26. sir. Twenty-eight. Yes, sir. Twenty-nine. Yes, sir. Thirty-one. Yes, sir. Thirty-two. Present, sir. Thirty-eight. Yes, sir. Forty. Yes, sir. Forty-one. Yes, sir. Forty-two. Yes, sir. Forty-three. What happened uh, to this guy? 44. Yes, sir. 45. Yes, sir. 46. Yes, sir. 52.